Hi everyone, this is Mike at Brash Monkey, and I'm excited to show you the first of many features to come, which will focus on improving workflow and saving you lots of time. In this first example, let's say that I want to give this robot that comes from the basic platform or art pack a second arm in the back. Okay, I've already moved the this his original arm down a bit back there to make room for the new arm. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I need to copy that arm, and instead of selecting and uh, reassembling a new arm from all the component parts, I can just take this already assembled arm here by selecting the, the, uh, the topmost bone in that arm's hierarchy and tapping the Z key that selects everything from that bone downward in the hierarchy. Um, so now that everything in that, that makes that arm is selected, if I hold the control key and click and drag, I now have a copy of that arm. And now that I have the copy of this arm, I can do what I need to with the bones, which you can see are already properly parented to the appropriate sprites. I can position this new arm uh, in a way that makes sense for what I need. Like so, make sure it's in the right general place. And then what I need to do is copy it to all the other subsequent frames, because you'll see when I use the T2 key to go uh, forward, that it's still only in that first uh, first keyframe. So I'm going to go back to that keyframe, select the um, major arm bone again, the shoulder bone, tap C to select everything, press Control C to copy, and then Control Shift V. And it's going to take a little while because my computer is old and I'm screen recording. There we go. So now, as I scrub here, you'll see not only is the arm attached properly, not only is it on every frame, but it's even attached properly to its parent bone, because when I pasted it, it kept that data. And the Z order is mostly correct, but as you can see, there is uh, potential issues with part of the arm being behind that other original back arm and other parts being in front. So for that, I'm going to need to go in and manually play on this first keyframe to fix that Z order. And to fix the Z order of sprites, I do not need bones, so I can hide the bones and lock them so that, I'm, uh, so that I don't accidentally select bones. And then I'm making sure again that I'm on a, a specific keyframe. It doesn't have to be the first at this point. Uh, but the goal here is to um, be able to quickly and easily select the specific sprites. And in the case of a back limb, it's pretty simple, or especially a back arm, because usually you're going to want it at the absolute back of the, uh, the Z order or drawing hierarchy. Uh, so what I can just start to do in this case is select each sprite. And if you hold Control and press the right arrow key, it goes all the way to the front. But if you press the left arrow key, it puts that object or sprite all the way to the back. So I'm just going to do that, control and holding the left to, um, and I did this in the wrong order, but that's fine. This is very quick. So you can see now the fist is all, all the way in the back, um, but it should have been like that, and then the shoulder would be last. So now the Z order, I'm going to uh, unlock the bones and show them again. So now you'll see that this backmost limb goes safely behind everything when I animate. So now I know the Z order is correct with this, uh, with this new back limb. But the problem is that Z order is only in this first keyframe. So this new feature we've added in Spriter is to simply choose Edit, Copy Z order to other frames. So now whenever you're working on an animation in which it uses the same sprites per keyframe. All you have to do uh, is perfect your Z order in one frame and then choose that option and it'll copy that Z order. So if I go to any keyframe here, you'll see the Z order of this back limb is still perfectly behind everything else. Uh, so that way, if you're rigging a character and setting it up and start animating only to discover after creating your eighth or 20th keyframe oh no, the Z order isn't right when I move this here, it looks all messed up. 
now you can simply fix that Z order in the current frame you're working on where you can see the problem and then choose edit copy Z order to other frames and that'll fix your issue across the entire animation. So the next time saving feature I wanted to show you is related to the what you could call the offset of an animation or it's uh, we're talking about the zero zero coordinate um, for that animation relative to the character itself. So as you can see in this idle animation the zero zero coordinate is uh, conveniently located right down at his um, sort of his heels where he would be standing on the floor which is pretty typical for a platformer game. Uh, but let's say there's an animation. A lot of times when you're making animations for a game, you might not know until you start using the animations in the actual game engine that one of the animations is not ideally aligned to work properly in the, in the game itself. So let's say, for example, we have this wall slide animation for a character that can jump off of walls. Um, we have the situation here where I had, uh, in the art pack, I had created this animation based on the idea of sort of the character's center of gravity so that if he rotated and stood up, his feet would be back on the floor where, where they belong. But let's say for your game engine, it would be more ideal if the hands and toes of this character were closer to the zero, zero coordinate. In past builds of Spryder, there would be no easy solution for this. You'd have to go to every keyframe. Luckily, there's not too many in this particular animation. But you'd have to go to every keyframe and then press Control A to select everything, and then use the arrow keys to move the, each frame of the character to the proper position. But now there's a much easier way. All you have to do is hold the M key and then left click and drag, and you'll see I'm actually moving uh, the uh, sort of the crosshairs that represent the zero zero coordinate. So now I can put those wherever I need, say something like this. And when I let go of uh, the left mouse button and then the M key, you'll see this fixed it on all keyframes all at once. So now you have your properly aligned animation. And the next feature I wanted to show you is going to be especially handy for people using the uh, essentials or full versions of the uh, animated art packs. Uh, and that's in relation to the scale of an entire project. So if I go into view and choose restore, restore zoom, this brings it back to 100% zoom. And you can see this character is quite large. Uh, in most platformer games, you wouldn't want your character to be that large relative to the screen. Um, and this uh, monitor is set to a resolution higher than most uh, platformer games would be played in the first place. So um, a lot of times what you're going to want to do when you use uh, platform art, or in, in this case platform art pack, but when you use art from an art pack, um, at some point you're going to want to scale the whole project to a size that's more appropriate for your particular game because you don't want to waste a lot of uh, memory and drawing time drawing huge sprites that are drastically larger than what your game actually needs. Or let's say, for example, you initially make your game for PC and you need the large high-res uh, images, but then you want to make a port of your game for a lower-resolution res device uh, like a, a smartphone or something. Um, then what you're going to want to do is uh, rescale your spriter files so that they're using uh, smaller images. And now there's a way to do that. And the next feature I wanted to show you is uh, going to be especially useful for those using the Essentials uh, animated art packs or the full animated art packs uh, for use in their game. Uh, and that is because I'm going to go into View, Restore Zoom. This is the actual size of the character in the art pack. It uses fairly large images, larger than you're probably going to need for your player character in a platform game, for example. Um, so what you're going to want to do eventually is scale the entire Spriter project down so you're not being very wasteful using up lots of memory, texture space, and drawing time on a needlessly large and high resolution character. And it's very important to understand that this feature permanently changes the actual source images of the Spriter project as well as the SCML file. So what I did and what you should do before using this feature is make a full copy of the entire 
Spriter project. In this case, it was platformer skin underscore robo. So I copied the entire project and renamed it to uh, underscore 50%. And as you can see, this has the uh, folders with all of the body part images and the SCML file. And then I load that SCML file into Spriter because I want to make sure I'm manipulating this copy. As you can see, it says 50% instead of permanently altering my original high resolution work. So now that I'm working with the copy instead of the original, all that I have to do is go into File, Other File Actions, Save as Resize Project, and choose 0.5 in this case. Let's say we need 50% of the resolution, and it will show you a preview of that new size. And then all we have to do is choose Save. And processes. Don't worry about that. That's just changing all of the positional data of the SML file, but it hasn't changed the scale down the actual images yet. So we're just going to save it over the original copy, I should say, of the uh, SML. We don't need to type in a new name or anything since this is all a copy anyway. Choose yes. And it's going to process for a little bit. So now when I reload that project that I just changed the scale of, you'll see that it's at the 50% size. And I'm going to hide the bones so you can see it better. All images and all animations are perfectly scaled to the new size. Let me zoom in so you can see it is indeed a lower resolution set of images. And there you go. But when you view it at the actual resolution needed for your game, you'll see it looks nice and clean. And everything's perfectly reduced to this new scale.